Hi, I'm Sarah from Mint Cummings. Such a pleasure to speak to you all today. Thanks for taking the time. Um, I guess most people might have already watched the first half of this final season, but maybe so they know what kind of era we're in and, and what's happening, but what can they expect from part two? Okay. Right. okay Kate, um, we meet her just before she's going to university. Um, you know, she's finding her independence and things like that, and she meets Prince William, and it kind of follows their, their love story, I suppose, and finding her own feet as well. And, and how she plays a role in William's life and things like that. So, For myself, it follows the relationship between Harry and William and how their kind of brotherhood is like evolving within this institution that is the royal family. I think William is, yeah, the relationships between Kate and Harry, but also the relationship with his future and also his relationship with grief. Um, and how those develop over time. And of course, um, you're probably all very familiar with The Crown before you got the call to maybe take on these roles. Um, what did you have in mind? And how did you approach, I guess, playing your characters? Because when there's just so much information out there, um, you know, do you draw on all of that research or do you try and, you know, look from more of a blank slate? Where do you begin? Yes, you draw on a lot of research, but the research is very specific. It's for that time period and before. It's not any of the recent um, news cycle because it, those characters don't know any of that. Um, hasn't happened yet. So you, yeah, you really invest in that timeline and what was going on at that timeline. But fundamentally, you've got an amazing script and that tells you 99% of what you need to know about what's going on with these people. Mm -hmm. And then that all the research just like takes you over the line. But also you've got, I mean, these these vocal coaches and, mm. yeah, and movement coaches, you want to talk about that? Uh, just like from in terms of what I had in mind, like you um, said, um, her kind of self-assuredness, if that's a word, was quite clear to me on the page. So I kind of tried to adopt this sense of like calm and, and easygoing energy. And I think I found that I saw that in her, in my research as well, like watching her, she's very easygoing and she's never flustered. So that kind of energy and vibe was kind of what I had in mind approaching the auditions and things like that. Well, it's funny because I guess like when you audition, like I didn't know much about the royal family or him. So the fact that like when you get given that you're like you've got like I was given the part and I hadn't done a lot of research, which is kind of interesting because then you, you like you're filling in all the gaps when you've like a reading and um, looking at interviews. But you do have to remember that you know, they've found you at a point where you didn't really know anything, so there must be something... In that. Yeah, within you that you're kind of able to do that they feel is right. So I think probably for me it was, like, just keeping, like, a certain lightness and... Because I, I hadn't gone to drama school and the whole kind of audition process was very, like, novel because I'd never done it before. I didn't think I was going to get it and it, like, escalated very quickly. So I had to kind of maintain this, like, a sense of carefree, yeah. kind of like, yeah. yeah, and like a certain cheekiness. Mm. Yeah. Which, um, yeah. He's just got, you know. Cheeky. Naturally cheeky. And I feel like every for each season of The Crown, it's always like, oh, gosh, well, these are some of the most monumental events that they had to portray, but perhaps particularly for this season and, and dealing with Princess Diana's death and, of course, you know, what that meant for, for her sons and, of course, course in this particular part as well dealing like you said with with that grief how did you kind of perhaps approach that and maybe some of these really intense scenes that you share with Dominic you know as a Prince Charles you know how was that for you yeah I think again it was helpful I mean I wasn't alive when Princess Diana died so I didn't have any I mean my my mum did but and my parents did but I didn't have any like serious connection to her and her legacy so I was able just to connect to it and tr trying to connect to what it would be like just anyone losing a mother, let alone her being this icon figure. Um, but again, like so much of it was there on the page and I didn't, it was more of just l letting it affect you and letting it, just letting it sort of wash over you really um, and just sort of sitting in it and what that would be like. Um, but I, and also I didn't, I didn't get to work with Elizabeth Debicki, um, but I think that in a way was also helpful because I was able to build my own perfect Diana. She was always the the sort of um, template, uh, but I was able to put my own, I was able to make up memories mm -hmm. of when she was the best mother in the world and make up memories when maybe I thought like she didn't 
uh, she was flawed in a way. So I was able to build this sort of perfect um, person in my head that when that person was taken away, that was able to affect me as a as an actor because it it was all the stuff that I needed as an actor to to feel the way I wanted to feel. Um, and how did you kind of approach that? And I guess also working on, the, you have to have this very lived in feeling of you being brothers. Um, so, you know, it was a lot of rehearsal period in, in order to kind of capture that. We had a bit of rehearsal period. I think it was, I think we just had natural chemistry, got on well. And also probably like properly, properly clicked on our first day of filming just because it's so intense and like, you're like in it together. And as, as like these characters are, you know, they're kind of like the only people that understand what the other one is going through. So uh, yeah, I think it would, be, it, would be, it would be quite difficult not to have kind of bonded, but it's just brought us all very close. Um, and in terms of uh, the kind of passing of Diana, I think like, yeah, what Ed said, but also like between us, it was also about like what isn't being said between these characters and like the importance of maybe like even lack of acknowledgement between them and the, what that kind of signifies. And I think the, the bond that we got just by being on set together and needing to lean on each other and needing to be like, we've got this because, you know, it's everyone else seems to know what this is, but we don't. I think that mirrored very much of the brother brother relationship of that, like mm -hmm. we might not talk about it, but we need to hold each other very close because we're both hurting, but we're not. We might not speak about it, but we. This is us. Mm. And of course, during the shoot, um, the fact that um, the Queen did pass away, that must have been, you know, quite challenging, perhaps. But maybe it also brought an added poignancy um, to shooting the rest of it, and also to the legacy that this show leaves behind. You know, obviously, it's got all these accolades, but I think it's going to have a special place in people's hearts as kind of a tribute to her and to her life. You know, so how did you feel about that being on the set and, and thinking about it afterwards? Um, well, we weren't filming up like us um, yeah. when uh, you know the Queen passed, but I think I mean the the atmosphere on set kind of mirrored the rest of Britain, I suppose. Yeah, you know, we had sure. some world. time off and, and yeah. things like that. And um, but yeah, incredibly sad. But I hope that people find you know the show moving in that sense of a kind of I don't know. Yeah, and the writers definitely Peter definitely took it into consideration. Yeah. And and wanted to wanted to um, honor it in a way, but you know, well, no spoilers. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, no, there's definitely it's definitely thought about. Yes, I mean, I definitely, I mean, uh, without tomorrow, so we can spoil. Oh it. yeah, true, we can spoil it all. We can. Do um, it. It's, uh, but definitely in that in the final episode, I feel like yeah, there's there's lots of beautiful symbolism and, and, and yeah. yeah. Well, I'm out of time, but thank you so much for sharing with me. Thank you. Can't Lovely wait to everyone else to watch the end of this uh, final season. Thanks Thank so much. Great. Thank you. Thanks. Nice to meet you. Thank you.